started. And this meeting is that's what I was going to say. We need to record this. So, okay. Very good. Wait, Christy, get Christy in here. Yep, there she oh, is. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to welcome you to our March meeting. Um, someone asked if we meet every month, and typically, yes, we do. So um, this is this is what we're going to do tonight. Um, can we have the next slide, please? Okay, I want to welcome our newest members. Uh, Karen Cox's name is not on here because Karen, we welcomed you before. But Jennifer Mapes, Diane Grove Ackerman, and Jason and Catherine Du Bois um, are all new members, and it's it's great to have you on board with us. And then um, let's not forget the horrors that are occurring in um, Ukraine. Uh, you can't not know about them. Um, I wanted to share with you if you're looking for a way to contribute to help out all, all the people there and the refugees who are leaving the country. Here are four organizations, and there are thousands of organizations, but these are four national and international organizations that have been vetted that um, we know are actually doing what they say they're doing with donations um, that go to them for the Ukrainian people. So if you're interested, uh, please contribute because they need they need lots of money. Um, that's the, the one thing they really need at this time. Um, I wanted to give you just a quick update before we start tonight's program on um, fair districts. And there really isn't an update on fair districts because there are a lot of things in the air. Uh, one is whether the new legislative map is going to be accepted by the Supreme Court. Uh, the Supreme Court is still waiting to hear why the commission um, didn't do what they were supposed to do the last time. So um, things are in the air. Uh, La Rosa's office and other people, um, legislators, commission members, whatever, are talking about, well, maybe we can postpone the election, move it from May 3rd, make it a little bit later. Uh, maybe we can change the, the time we need to allow for our, um, the people overseas who get ballots to receive their ballots. So nobody knows what's going on. I think tomorrow or Thursday, we're supposed to know something from the Supreme Court, but you know it's mostly unknowns. But I did find a quote today that I think is so funny. Um, I wanted to share it with you. And it's from somebody named Tyler Buchanan. And he says, it's going to be the year 2049 and we'll still be seeing headlines like Ohio Supreme Court rejects 130th congressional map attempt and mm -hmm. lawmakers seek solution for holding primary election from decades ago. So I just, I thought that was so perfect um, that I, I wanted to share it with you. Uh, okay. Debbie, yes. Debbie, that young man was uh, one of the testifiers. He drew a map and it was made a lot of sense. And You're right. uh, Representative Cup or Senator Cup, whatever he is, was very, uh, uh, approved, you know, or had good things to say about it. So, and he actually was there two different watch party days. You know, uh, now that you mention it, Fayanne, I saw him and his maps were good. And I was, I was so, I was almost embarrassed on behalf of the commission because <laughs> after he How many times? <laughs> and, and they yeah. were, they were good and they were mm -hmm. solid and Cup even sort of agreed. I mean, he encouraged him to keep doing what he was doing, but they never considered them. And that right. was the case with all the other maps that were presented. And I, I just thought, you know, this is wrong. 
But right. I'm glad you I'm glad you said that because I thought the name was familiar. But now that you mentioned it, I saw I saw both of his presentations. So thank he you. He looked he looked very young, and in he fact, did. I think Iris made a cute comment. Is he 12 or 13 or something like that? <laughs> yeah, that's but, right. But you know, he really was very articulate about what he mm -hmm. was saying. He was. He was very good. So thanks, Fan, for that comment. Okay, let's get on with tonight's program. We have two presenters, Marquise Seward, who is with Kent Social Services, and Anne-Marie Noble with the Haven of Portage County. And they're gonna talk about human, human needs in our county and some of the ways that they are helping to fulfill those. So uh, Marquise, you're up first and I'll turn it over to you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me tonight. I greatly appreciate this um, platform of being able to talk about what we do, um, who we serve at Kent Social Services. Um, many of you may may not know um, Kent Social Services. Uh, we are the only food program within the city um, that offers our clients both a pantry program as well as a food program, um, hot meals. Um, I do want to mention that we are part of a larger agency. We fall under the umbrella of family and community services. So with that, we are um, one of the two food programs um, under that umbrella, Center of Hope being um, the other program. Um, many of our clients that we serve, um, they receive SNAP benefits. And what does that mean? SNAP um, is the acronym for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Um, most people would know this by an EBT card or a food stamp card. Um, clients that receive these benefits, um, it's, it's really to supplement their income as far as being able to buy healthier um, groceries, which ultimately leads to healthier choices. So we see a lot of um, seniors that come through. We serve a lot of um, just individuals, um, a lot of households, anywhere from um, 35 to 40 households. And that is also based on a monthly basis. Um, I think it's also important for people to realize that we do not have a permanent source of funding. So we really depend heavily on donations. And some of the ways that we get those donations um, is locally, we get some, you know, we get a percentage of income from United Way, um, 20 to 24%. Um, of those funds come from there. So we are able to buy our food. We do not spend any of our um, donations on taxable items. So again, when, you know, we put something out on Facebook, you know, for example, like today we had something um, out there talking about diapers. Those are items that are usually donated to us. So again, we don't spend any of our dollars on um, any taxables. So again, we, we really depend heavily on uh, donations from our community. Um, another way is food drives. Food drives are very important to us. Um, it really gives us the opportunity to provide our clients with um, a variety of foods rather than just the staple items that they would normally receive in our pantry, which are like your items um, such as tuna, peanut butter, pasta, cereal. Um, another way is um, Amazon. Uh, we get a lot of, you know, donations, people that are um, out of state that still want to contribute, whether it is uh, monetarily, it's very convenient to send uh, food items through Amazon. So we found that to be very helpful. Um, for clients to be eligible to receive food as far as our pantry, um, they do have to have an income um, or their household 
must be 130% below the federal poverty level. So that's about $1,245 per individual. So a lot of times, you know, we have clients that will come in, we do not um, ask them to provide proof of income. It's just really basically on an honor system. And we find that most people that do come visit our pantry are really there because they, they truly need the help. Um, another thing uh, we keep track is through a system, an online system that we have is called Pantry Track. So this keeps track of all of the um, clients that we come in. It, it keeps track of um, how often they visit our pantry, um, their demographics. It keeps uh, track of all of that. Um, it also provides uh, emergency assistance. So um, again, you know, that's a good feature for that we have to keep track of um, who we serve and how often we serve. So those numbers can be used when we do apply for um, that needed funding. Um, as far as our hot meals go, right now we are still serving hot meals out of Trinity Lutheran Church. Um, when our renovation started last year, we were only supposed to be at Trinity Lutheran um, from April through September. Um, things with COVID, materials got behind and um, COVID and, you know, things of that nature. So that kind of pushed our time back. So we've been serving our hot meals curbside at Trinity Lutheran um, almost for a whole year. So that was definitely not planned. Um, and they have been more than more than accommodating to us. Um, so I definitely want to give a shout out to them. Um, we also have not really stopped serving our clients. Um, the need has always been there. The need, unfortunately, will continue to be there. And um, you know, I think we've 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 done a great job with with keeping it going, especially through um, these times that we are that we are facing, we are living in. Um, with that being said, with our, our renovations, um, I know a lot of people are asking, you know, when will we reopen? And unfortunately, I do not have that answer. Um, we have a couple more things that we have to do to um, get our, per our occupancy permit. Um, we have to provide an egress door inside of our building. Um, we have to put in um, a drain that will run from our self-serve water station um, back behind our stoves down to the floor. Once we get that, um, the last thing is just getting our new dishwasher calibrated. And then we should um, be able to get those permits, get our permit from the health department. And once we do that, we will be fully functional. Um, with our renovation also, prior to us renovating, we were serving both our hot meals and our pantry out of the same area. So we, we tried to come up with something to where we wouldn't have to stop serving our hot meals during that time that, um, I'm sorry, stop serving our pantry clients during the time that we were serving hot meals because it was all being done within the same area. So now with our expansion of our dining room, we are able to serve our um, clients not only during lunchtime, um, but all day. So if a client comes in and you know they come in at 11.30 for lunch and they have a pantry appointment um, at 11.45, they're able to do that. Whereas, like I said before, we would have to um, stop. So that is that is definitely um, a benefit to us. Um, and again, the, the need is is there. The need, unfortunately, will always will always be there. But um, donations and just the the community, the generosity of the community, we are able um, to keep filling that gap. Um, and again, like I, I can't stress enough that we really do not have a permanent source of funding. So we we definitely depend and appreciate those uh, donations that we receive. So.
Okay, was I muted? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, does anyone have questions for Marquise? Yes, Janice. Marquise, thank you so much for the update. And I was wondering, can you uh, describe or explain any changes you've noticed uh, in the area in terms of need over the past few years? <clears throat> Well, you know, again, it's it, it's one of those things where um, the need the need is always there. Um, sometimes, month to month, we keep track of how many clients we served, as far as our pantry, as far as our hot meal program. Sometimes the numbers go they go up when COVID first hit. Our numbers really um, almost tripled. Um, several months later, they kind of plateaued a little bit and just kind of goes up and down. Really, we don't know how to explain that. Um, I, I, I will say that we definitely do not see the numbers um, based on the, the eligible individuals, households, I should say, that are actually eligible. Um, when you think in terms of the children that receive free and reduced meals, that, that number is significantly high, but we don't see that in our pantry. So I don't know if it's, um, sometimes people don't know exactly what we do or um, individuals that are just moving to the area are unaware that uh, the food pantry exists. It's really, really kind of hard to, to tell, but the numbers do, they fluctuate. Yes, Christy. Hi, Marquise. Uh, good job, thank you. Hi, Christy. Um, I'd just like to add a, a couple of things. Um, sometimes people ask us what's best to donate, food or money? And Marquise alluded to the fact that the donations help us in terms of variety of foods because we use the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank for our purchases rather than buying groceries retail. And the food bank often has a limited selection. So I just wanted to point out that we need both. We need the food drives and food donations, but if you have money to donate, we can take your dollar and get more food at the food bank than if you went to the grocery store with that dollar and bought food at a retail price. Um, so I just wanted to to let you know that we are able to buy our food at a, a discount. Um, I also wanted to mention with the capital campaign, how blessed we are to be in this community. Um, we needed almost half a million dollars, um, which sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Um, we I think our architects did a great job of utilizing the space. We had an existing overhang over both ends of the building. So we've pushed the walls out without having to do anything with the, the roof, saving money. And we had very large walk-in freezer and cooler inside that are now outside, thanks to the city of Kent and the socially responsible sweatshop that paid for those. So that made a lot of square footage available in the building. So I think we were able to use that money very wisely to increase the square footage in the building. And I wanted to mention um, that we didn't use any operating money for the capital campaign. In fact, you may not even know that we had a capital campaign. It was so quiet because we had so many families in Kent come forward with very, very generous donations. Um, that it was, as I said, it was such a, an unexpected blessing, um, the, the help that we received from the community. Um, and last, I just wanted to say thank you to the League of Women Voters. We're hoping that you'll come back. I know we use the space for our monthly meetings and it's expanded. It no longer looks like a 1968 restaurant <laughs> with the lace curtains. Um, it has a contemporary look, um, very inviting. And so um, we look forward to having you back if you'd like to continue to use our, our space 
in the future. And thank you for your support over the years and the donations from so many people here. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Christy. Um, I see we have a couple questions in the chat. One is, do you need volunteers at the pantry? And then the follow up to that is, what do your volunteers do? And how do you become a volunteer? So once we are uh, fully operational, we will need volunteers um, because our hot meal side is, there's no one over there right now. Um, we're just operating out of the pantry and we do have uh, core volunteers that are there Monday through Friday. So as of right now, we are okay. Um, the volunteers that are in the pantry, what they do is um, sort donations, make sure nothing that comes in is expired. Um, they stock, they escort clients through the pantry. Um, our volunteers that are on the hot meal side of things, they actually help to prep and serve the hot meals. And those meals are done down at Trinity Lutheran right now. Um, and it's all curbside. So once we are um, all back under one roof, we are still going to be curbside until we have our grand opening, our open house. So um, anyone that is interested, we are asking that you go onto the Family and Community Services website, um, that's FCS Serves, and go to volunteer now. And then you have an option to click the program that you want to volunteer with. And then the volunteer coordinator will actually um, reach out to you, get some information and then send that over to um, us at KSS. Thank you. You're if welcome. you have any more questions, because I may not see you if you raise your hand, please put them in the chat and we'll just, we'll pull them out of there. Um, so Marquise, thank you so much for that information. Christy, you as well. And thank you. we will turn this over now to Anne-Marie Noble. Thank you. And I just have to say what a pleasure it is to be on the same platform with Christy and Marquise as, I don't know if you know, but we used to all work together when I was mm -hmm. at um, FNCS. So um, they've are continuing to do a phenomenal job under circumstances. And I can certainly sympathize with wanting to get our business open and moving. Um, I'm representing the Haven of Portage County, which is the newest homeless shelter. And um, like Kent Social Services, we've hit some stumbling roadblocks along the way with our construction. Uh, part of it, again, goes back to COVID um, funding, um, inspections. Uh, you know, you think you've got it all. And then when an inspector comes in, it's like, oh, no, you got to do A, B, C, and D. And you know, you're back to the drawing board. And it doesn't always happen overnight. So um, I'm going to say flat out, I don't know when we're going to open up. Um, you know, it's up to our general contractor as far as moving things along. And I have not had an opportunity to have a conversation with him as of late. So I'm hoping by April 1st, but um, part of that is going to be dependent upon the weather, because we have to put an egress sidewalk off from the women's dorm um, out to the road so that in the event, if we needed to evacuate from the women's dorm, they would have um, an access way. And then there were two other, three other minor things that um, we're waiting on being corrected and that's through the electrical department. So with that being said, um, we will be able to accommodate 64 
individuals once we do open. We have a women's dorm, a men's dorm, and then we have two separate rooms, which will be for families. Um, <clears throat> you never know how many you're going to get of either side. So we've kind of split the beds down with the ability to, you know, if we need more on the women's side, we can put them on the women's side. If we need more on the men's side. Um, it's really hard to describe how it's set up, but as someone comes to the door, once we are fully operational, we have a security system. We have 16 cameras. There's cameras in every room except in the, in the, um, the restrooms. So, um, and then we have a main um, screen that who's ever at the intake um, desk can see everything that's going on. Um, when someone comes, we have a, a um, like an iPad that we can have a conversation with them be prior to letting them in. Once they come in, we'll be able to do background checks. I just recently signed a contract with um, an organization that says protect my ministry. And we'll be able to do background checks on volunteers as well as the guests that are going to be staying with us. Our goal is to make sure we provide a very safe environment. So we want to make sure because we're going to have families and women on one side um, that we don't have sexual predators or anyone that has had um, a recent domestic violence um, charge or anyone that has any open charges because then we would be considered aiding and abetting and we certainly don't need to be doing that. Um, the folks that will be coming into us um, I, I just want to stress that we're not a flop house where we can just come one night and stay. Um, folks are going to need to be able to commit to working um, the program that we have established. And we have um, relationships with um, Hope Village, uh, Coleman Professional, Ohio Means Jobs, and um, various other agencies that are in the county. So one of the things we know is there are other experts out there and we don't need to reinvent the wheel when we can bring them in as partners. Um, as you come in the front door, there'll be, well, there is a computer lab. We have three computers set up. So folks staying with us can do job search, get email and um, things like that, build their resume, work with folks from Ohio Means Jobs. Um, I wish we could, you know, have a meeting there sometime so that we could um, actually see what the facility looks like. We also have a social area where folks can watch TV, play card games, or board games, or read. Um, there's a dining area. We have six tables for dining. And then, of course, we have a beautiful brand new kitchen. I was able to get a capital grant, and uh, Randy Kleitz was instrumental in introducing that for us. And, and of course, Gail um, picked up and made sure that it was pushed through. So um, we we're very thrilled about that. The thing is, we couldn't use it for construction, but we could use it for furniture. And uh, we couldn't use it for computers either. So we, we were able to use it furniture and appliances. So that gave us the ability to buy all brand new appliances. So we have two um, gorgeous stoves, a, uh, a griddle, we have um, freezer, refrigerator. And of course there's never enough room, but you know, you make do with what you have, but um, we don't have to worry about 
having used um, equipment and worrying about them breaking down. So we're really blessed to be able to um, have that. And then also the furniture that we have in the, um, the day areas, as well as the dining room uh, was also purchased with that grant money. And I have to mention Randolph Home Furnishings worked with us um, and she just was wonderful as far as um, her decorating skills. So we wanted it to be soft and homey looking and inviting. We also have a, a chapel or you can call it a meditation room that folks can go in if they just want to, um, you know, have some quiet time by themselves. Or we also have a relationship with some of the different churches in the area if they would like to come in and, um, you know, offer some spiritual guidance for the folks. Okay, uh, going up to the second level, um, on the left hand side, there will be, there are, I should say, two showers and a restroom. One of the things that we've learned over the years is there are some folks out there that have some severe mental illness, and they just can't be around anyone else. And so they're not going to necessarily want to stay at the shelter, but they may want to come in and get showers and wash their clothes. So um, not only do we have those showers available, but we also have washers and dryers available that were donated by Myers Appliance. So this has been very much a, a community-minded project. And um, we also, only exist on private donations. So um, we're not taking any HUD money because then when you take HUD money, you have to dance to their rules and regulations. And we wanna make sure that folks are able to um, move themselves along and be more, more successful. And we know it's not going to take 30 days. Habits are really difficult to change. And someone, it, it might take somebody six months, as long as they're working the plan. And if they need a mentor to walk along beside them, we anticipate being able to provide them with those individuals. So um, we will provide meals. Uh, we'll do a breakfast and a dinner. I hesitate on the lunch because I know Kent Social Services is to the west of us and uh, the Center of Hope is to the right of us. And there's a bus stop right out in front of our, our facility. So we would hope that those folks would entertain going to um, those hot meals. Um, but, you know, if, if they want to have something at our facility, we would definitely, you know, make sure that we would have food available for that. Um, one of the things that we've learned along the way, and I know Christy and Marquise will agree with me, folks don't necessarily want to hand out, they want to hand up and they don't know where to begin if they've lost a job or you know, lost their housing, maybe went through a divorce, um, and they just don't know where to start to, to find those resources. And that's one of our, our big items that we're going to be working on is helping them um, to move forward, whether it's permanent housing and a job and their GED and things like that. So... We do have one room that we call the community room, and that's where we can invite um, the different other agencies to come in and meet one-on-one -on -one with our guests that are staying with us. Uh, what have I left out? <laughs> oh, golly. 
I think that's about it. I think I've covered all of the rooms and, and everything that we'll be doing. Um, volunteers, we are definitely, definitely um, utilize volunteers, especially in the kitchen and in the intake area. Um, there's only two employees, myself, and I just recently hired a program director who will um, be responsible for uh, training and scheduling and uh, recruiting the volunteers. So, uh, gosh, where am I? I think that's it. I'm sure there's questions. I'm good with answering yeah. questions. So, and Marie, I'll start with some of the questions that have popped up in the chat. Um, you, how do you determine who's eligible to use the facility? Um, just by doing a, uh, a background check through the program that I mentioned earlier, Protect My Ministry. And, um, you know, I, I don't see us turning people away if they have you know, if they fit the criteria as far as not having any sexual um, predator charges against them or recent domestic violence, so. And do you get those results right away? Is it an instantaneous thing? Yes, okay. yes, yeah. So the other thing that I um, need to mention is we have a, a room that has plastic bins in there. Each bin is numbered. All the beds are numbered. So the bins correspond with the beds. When they go back into the sleeping areas, whatever they have with them, whether it's a coat or, um, you know, they're known to, to carry backpacks. So all that will go in a bin and that will be locked because we want to make sure there's no drugs or um, dangerous weapons going back into those sleeping areas. So, and then we also have the mailboxes for each person that's staying with us. And those will also be numbered to correspond with, um, like if you're in bed number one, then your bin will be number one and your mailbox will be number one. Um, just following up with who can be there, uh, there's a question asking you to talk more about the plan that they're required to follow. Well, everyone will be treated as an individual. And if someone needs to get their GED to be able to become employable, um, we will do that on the initial interview. When they first come in, they'll get one sheet of paper that to fill out just general information, name, you know, uh, birth date, last four socials, so that we can do that background check. Um, but um, we'll, we just have to treat everybody as an individual, we'll find out what it is they need. How did they become homeless? How long have they been homeless? Um, what is it that they are looking for? And then we can set some goals for them. And, you know, I have a, a program that's called Five Bold Steps. And you start with, with your goal. And then what steps do you need to take to attain that goal? What are your support systems? And, and what are your... Um, what are your barriers that you're gonna to have to overcome? Well, following up on that, someone has asked, I think this is probably a volunteer opportunity. Would you want someone to come in and do a training on resumes or interviewing periodically? Absolutely. <laughs> um, you can go to our website, portagehaven.org and then go to the, I think there's a drop down box for volunteering and our application is um, on there and they can fill that out and make sure that they indicate what their um, their interest area is. So that would be fabulous. Okay, that's great. 
Are there other questions for Anne Marie? There's just so much. I mean, we wouldn't be where we are today without the generosity of the community. And, you know, just like the ladies that spoke before me, um, we are really truly blessed to have the folks in the community that are willing to help, whether it's monetary or you know donate something or just be there for us um, we have blessing bags everyone will get a blessing bag and we've been accumulating those along the way as well so and they also have toothbrushes um, a toothpaste, a personal care items, you know, it's just everybody's going to get one as they come in. And depending on how long they're there, we have to replenish those items. So, yeah. Okay. Um, we have another question. In what ways is KSU involved with your facility? Okay. Initially, um, Kent State has offered their podiatric department. Oh. It's one of the things that we know um, homeless folks are on their feet a lot. So they are willing to come in and check feet. And then the nursing department is interested in coming in and doing blood pressure checks, as well as um, uh, glucose screening checks. And I will mention that Maplewood Career Center um, is also interested in providing, especially in the culinary arts department, they're willing to come in and do training so that someone could build a, a skill set and then hopefully become employable. And then we have um, hairdressers that are willing to come and do haircuts. So those community partners are really critical. Um, another question, do the residents help clean up the facility? Do they have chores? Do they have jobs to do? While they're yes, doing? they they will. Um, in addition to doing their laundry, they'll also um, be responsible for um, either, you know, maintaining their sleeping area, as well as helping with um, doing the dishes or even cooking. You know, we might have some folks that have a strong interest in that. So I was really fortunate when I um, hired our program director and he had mentioned he had been in the army for five years. And I said, oh, well, what was your specialty there? And he said, food service. Well, so I'm like, yes. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Anybody that you wanna stick in the chat? Okay. And I just want to encourage if anybody wants to come out and see the facility, I know we're not supposed to bring a large group in right now because we're still considered a construction zone. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I'd, I'd be more than happy to, you know, if you want, if you have a group of ladies that want to come out, I'd love to, to show. It's just, um, you've got to see it to believe it, I guess. It sounds really exciting. I'm uh, really looking forward to grand openings for both places. Um, it'll be wonderful to, to see them. Uh, one more question that popped up. Will there be transportation to Kent Social Services for food or Center of Hope? Um, as I mentioned earlier, there is a bus stop right out in front of our building. And I... Um, got a grant from PARTA for some uh, bus passes. So we'll be able to provide them with uh, that stipend to be able to go back and forth. So yes, down the road, <laughs> I would like um, to be, hopefully have a vehicle that we would be able to transport individuals to different appointments and things like that. Um, let me let me just jump to the food service again that we're going to be doing, um, particularly breakfast. Um, 
what I would like to see is have enough volunteers that when the guests get up, they get their shower and they come down to the um, dining area. I would hope to be able to have maybe two different entrees, maybe even three, and then have volunteers go over to the table and take their order just like you do in a restaurant and then go back to the kitchen and then bring it back out and serve it. I just, that's something I'd really have wanted to do. So I, I hope I can implement that and have enough volunteers to be able to help. That would be a lovely touch, I think. It's very nice, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, well, I am just so, impressed by our, our little Portage County, um, the wonderful services and, and the way that everybody's come together to make things happen. It's just, it's so heartwarming. Um, and thank you all who work so hard to make it happen. It's, uh, it's going to be great when you get open, when both places are open. And we certainly look forward to uh, seeing them and returning to Kent Social Services for our meetings, I hope. So uh, yeah, that, yes. that'll be wonderful. So thank you. Marquise, did you want to say something? Oh, no. Go. I was just agreeing with you, you know, as oh, far okay. as you all being able to come back to our, our, our building. Yeah. Um, it's very, it's very nice. So we, we're excited. We can't wait to go. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, this is, this is, we're going to wrap up our meeting early. This is wonderful. I do have a couple announcements. Um, this weekend, the time changes. So we're oh going to spring gosh. forward. It seems early, doesn't it? It um, does. But, yeah. But it is this weekend. So um, rest up. You're going to lose that hour of sleep. And our next meeting is Monday, April 4th. It will also be a Zoom meeting, hopefully our last Zoom meeting for a while. And it's going to be our annual look at our local positions and priorities. It's, it's what our program will be uh, for the next year. So um, I hope you'll all join us and bring friends. Uh, we'd like to have um, a good discussion. So that's, that's what's on for... Um, April and May is going to be a surprise. So uh, we, we hope you'll all be back for, uh, for both of those meetings. So I thank you so much um, and look forward to seeing you in April. And again, to Anne-Marie and Marquise, great, great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you having for us. Thank you for the invite. We appreciate yeah, it. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Good night. Night all.